Hey guys, Pete here. This is going to be my 10 things you might have missed in Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 2. If you haven't watched Episode 2 yet, then you're going to want to stop watching this video now because it does contain spoilers for the episode. Check out some of my other Game of Thrones videos, though, if you're leaving. And for those of you who stayed, there are quite a few callbacks to earlier episodes here. We noticed some of these in the first episode, but there were just a ton here. So I have a feeling we're going to be seeing more of this stuff as the season goes on since they are moving towards the end. So let's jump into it. The first one was a little bit obvious, especially if you just recently binged through the Game of Thrones series, maybe. But in case you did miss it, John is not the first member of the family to choke out Littlefinger. Of course, we saw this scene where he gets angry about Sansa and what Peter Baelish says there. And he chokes him down there in the crypts in front of Ned's statue. Well... Ned himself had, way back in Season 1, Episode 3, when he found out that Littlefinger had been hiding Catelyn in one of his brothels. Now, of course, Ned isn't actually John's father, we know that now, but he's still the man who raised him, and we see that he's passed on the tendency to choke out weasels to John either way. It's also worth noting here that we found out that Littlefinger is the one who brought home Ned's bones out of respect for Cat. These bones had been a mystery, so it's nice to know that they've been brought back and he's been laid to rest with all of his Stark ancestors. The second thing you might have missed is the thing that Arya said to Nymeria is a callback to something that she said to her father in Season 1. I talked about the meaning of what she said in my recap and review for this episode. But if, if what she actually said and what the description is sounds a little familiar, it's because it's referencing something that Arya had said whenever Ned was talking to her back in season one. He was saying that Bran would grow up and be a lord of a castle, and Arya asked if she could be a lord too. And what he said was, you'll marry a high lord and rule his castle, and your sons shall be knights and princes and lords. Arya responds, no, that's not me. So, you know, she's kind of referencing herself whenever she tells Nymeria, it's not you. The third thing you might have missed was a little callback from Daenerys when she responds to Melisandre. Melisandre says, as Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, he allowed the wildlings south of the Wall to protect them from great danger. As king in the north, he has united those wildlings with the northern houses, so together they may face their common enemy. So, you know, she's saying that John is really quite an impressive leader, and Daenerys responds, he sounds like quite a man. Now, back in season five, Samwell was reading a letter to Ma Maester Aemon that said things about Daenerys herself. It said that, and though Daenerys Targaryen maintains her grip on Slaver's Bay, forces rise against her from within and without. She refuses to leave until the freedom of the former slaves is secure. And then Sam says to Aemon, she sounds like quite a woman. So it's pretty much the same thing, just the roles are reversed here. Fourth thing you might have missed, another callback was that Queen of Ashes comment that Tyrion said. You know, he mentioned that if he attacked, that tens of thousands of people would be burned and she'd be known as the Queen of Ashes. Well, back in Season 3, Episode 4, Varys is talking to Olena Tyrell and talking about how treacherous Littlefinger really is. And what he says is that he would see this country burn if he could be King of the Ashes. So there's a little callback there. The fifth thing you might have missed was when Tyrion sent his message from Dragonstone up to Winterfell to Jon Snow. Jon pointed out that there was something in it that made him know that it was definitely Tyrion. You remember Tyrion and Jon met outside the celebration way back in the first episode of the series. And Jon asks him after he gets angry, what would you know about being a bastard? And Tyrion replies, all dwarves are bastards in their father's eyes. So Jon pointed out that that's how he knew Tyrion really wrote the letter, because that was a conversation they had. But you might not have realized that it happened way back in the very first episode in season one. The sixth thing that you might have missed was the reasoning behind why Sam wants to cure Jorah's grayscale. As you might think, these two guys have never met each other, but Sam obviously knew his father, who was Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, when Sam arrived at the Wall. 
So this is a direct callback to Jorah's father, Jorah Mormont. In episode two of season three, Samwell would have died, like literally died, after the battle with the Walkers at the White Walkers at the Fist of the First Men, if it wasn't for Jorah Mormont. As the brothers are walking, he falls to his knees. You remember the scene probably now. He basically gives up. He doesn't want to go on. He says, that, you know, that the brothers left him. But then Jor comes back and he comes over and he delivers the line to, to Samuel. He says, Tarly, I forbid you to die. And then the other brothers are kind of being dickwads or whatever. So he tasks Rast to make sure that Sam gets back alive or else Rast won't either. So basically he threatens him and in doing that he saves Sam's life. So now Sam wants to save Jorah's. The seventh thing you might have missed, and this is another thing I talked about in my last video, but bending the knee is not something that's likely going to happen given the history of the king in the north. Now, if you're looking at this just from a character perspective of who Jon Snow is, you might say, well, maybe he'll be reasonable about this. But it's really not just his decision. I mean, there's a long line of kings here, and the people in the north are people of tradition, right? So literally for thousands of years, House Stark has ruled the North and never bended the knee to anyone. Now this goes all the way back, like for context, the Stark House is ancient, right? They were founded by Bran the Builder who built the wall and that went up 8,000 years ago. So it's not like they're just a new family or anything, right? They're, they're direct descendants of the first men. And there was no time in all of that history until Aegon and his conquest came through that they bent the knee. They've just always been like, you know, the you've heard of the kings of winter, which some of them called themselves and the ones that are down in the crypts, right? So 8,000 years, they never bent the knee to anyone. During the conquest, when Aegon came through, Torrin Stark bent the knee, and that earned him the title, the King Who Knelt. Like, that's what he's remembered as, is his kneeling to Aegon. And that was in a situation where he was outnumbered in men, like Aegon's army was bigger, plus they had like three full-grown dragons and riders, and they had just wiped out the combined forces of the Riverlands. So these were extreme situations, and you might say to yourself, well, Daenerys has three dragons, and but yeah, it, it you know, it, it's after Ned was taken prisoner by Joffrey for treason, Rob refused to bend the knee, and he became the king in the north, right? And John's feelings or thoughts aside, it's just not something that you do, you know? And so it's very unlikely that John would bend the knee after what's happened. Definitely not to Cersei, but even to Daenerys, because there is no immediate threat at this point. What's even more unlikely is that his bannermen would accept that. Like it would just, everything would just fall apart. Like he could just explain that to Daenerys. Like I'm not bending the knee because then no one's going to listen to me. You know what I mean? And it would be basically an empty gesture. The eighth thing you might have missed was in the scene, there's a lot going on, when Euron has Yara and Theon is kind of having his breakdown based on his past abuse at the hands of Ramsay. You might have missed the fact that Euron's crew was walking around cutting out the tongues of the survivors from the other side. Now, you know that his ship is called the Silence, and the reason it's called that is, is because he cuts out the tongues of, at least in the books, he cuts out all the tongues of his crew, and there's a whole story that goes into that. You can watch my Euron character profile video if you want. I won't go into all of it now. But yeah, they were taking their tongues out right then, so that was pretty interesting callback to the books, if nothing else. The ninth thing you might have missed was Jorah was writing his letter to Daenerys as he was there basically getting ready to end his life. That's not a terribly big surprise since he sent, you know, he was sent by her to get healed, but if you zoom in, you can pretty much read most of the letter. And it reads, Khaleesi, I went to the Citadel in the last hope that the Maesters could treat me as you ordered. Even with all, and then you can't read a little bit there, it says, I am beyond any cure out the grave. I have had a longer life than I deserved, and I only wish I could have lived to see the world you're going to build standing by your side. I have loved you since the moment I met you. If there's, and there's another part you can't see, and it's signed Jorah. So yeah, that's, that's a touching thing to pick up on, I guess. Like I said, it's not a real big surprise that he would write a letter to her whenever he was doing that since he doesn't have much family. Yeah, that's what it says. 
And the tenth thing you might have missed was Sam was holding books. Um, Abros was was stacking them up there. Uh, not exactly sure if it was for Sam to read or if this was for Abros's own studies. But one of the books you can see is called An History of the House Lannister. And I'm not just an idiot. That's what it actually says on there. So it's a little bit messed up grammatically. But he's looking at that history of House Lannister. Is it important? It might be. So let me know what you guys think. I have uh, a couple other Game of Thrones videos I want to put out this week, so make sure you check back. Please like this one. Please subscribe to my channel as I'm putting out a full schedule of Game of Thrones videos. Now the season's in full swing on top of all the other stuff I do. Please leave me comments about these and other things that you saw that I might have missed. Follow me on Twitter and like my Facebook page and my Instagram account. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.